जय राधम माधव कुंज जय राधा माधव कुंज हय गोपी जनवा गिरे वर हय गोपी जनवा गिरे वर सूर्नंदन भज जन झसौरनंदन भज जन झमून थीरा झमून थीरा झी झमून हे ढैया आधारुंज भैया हे ढैय गोपी जनवा गिरिवार ढैया गोपी जनवा गिरिवार सौरनंदन भज धन झसौरनंदन भज धन झमून थीरा झमून थीरा हे जय राज बिहारे हे जय राधा कुंज बिहारे Okay, verse forty-eight. So, wow, long, long purport. <laughs> okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
This is Canto 8, Chapter 24, Matsya, the Lord's Fish Incarnation, verse number 48. Yatsevangi, Yatsevayangi, Yeruda, Yatsevayangi, Ivaruda, Ro, no, no, that's not going to work. Yatsevayangi, Ivaruda, Rodanam. Pumam Vijayan Mala Atmanas Tamaha Bajeta Varnam Nija Esa Sovayo Buyad Saisha Paramo Guru Guruhu Yad Seva Yagir Eva Rudra Rodanam Pumam Vijayan Mala Atmanas Tamaha Pajeta Varnam Nija Asa Sovyayo Buyad Sa Isha Paramo Guru Guruhu Chant. <laughs> Yad Sevaya, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by serving whom? Agne, in touch with fire. Eva, as it is. Rudra Rodanam, a block of silver or gold becomes purified. Puman, a person, Vijayat, can give up, Malam, all the dirty things of material existence, Atmana, of oneself, Tamaha, the mode of ignorance, by which one performs pious and impious activities. Pajeta may revive Varnam, his original identity, Nijam, 
one's own. Esa, he. Isha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Oh, I'm sorry, I said Sa, that was, that was he. Isha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Parama, the Supreme. Guru, Guru, the spiritual master of all other spiritual masters. Okay, translation. So this is the king, King Satyavrat, is uh, offering prayers to the, the incarnation of the Lord known as, as Matsya. The Lord has now re assumed his original size and now king is offering beautiful prayers. One who wants to be freed from material entanglement should take up the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and give up the contamination of ignorance involving pious and impious activities. Thus one regains his original identity. Just as a block of gold or silver sheds all dirt and becomes purified when treated with fire, may that inexhaustible Supreme Personality of Godhead become our master, our spiritual master, for he is the original spiritual master of all spirit, other spiritual masters. Om Ajnana Timiranda Sya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmelitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guravena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya Desatarine Vanchakopa Taru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pe Bacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Sushila Prabhupada's purport In human life one is meant to undergo austerity to purify one's existence. Hmm. So Austerity is meant to purify one's existence. That means taking on some difficulty, some physical or mental hardship in order to uh, free oneself from the entanglement of material life. In other words, give up something you like, give up something you like to do, or take on some just like we have austerities, the four regulative principles, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating and no gamble. You see, these are austerities. So what does it do? It purifies one's existence. It frees ones from the, as we will hear, and it's mentioned, the contamination of material existence. So when you have to understand that this material world is a dirty place, because it, it piles onto the soul things that are unnatural. The soul is by nature pure, the soul is by nature part of God. The soul can not be not, nothing else but pure, but when it comes in contact with some something that is foreign to its existence, becomes covered and that is called dirt or contamination of material existence. Tapo divyam putra sadbam sudyet because of contamination of the modes of material nature, one continues in the cycle of birth and death. Karanunguna Sangha Syad Sarasad Joni Janmasyu. So because of this contamination, we have to continue to take birth life after life. The living entity is eternal. The living entity has nothing to do with the material world or the material body. But because of the contamination of the material energy, one is subjected to birth, old age, disease, and death, which is foreign to the soul's existence. And this is the contamination of the material energy. 
And there, of course, there are many other forms of contamination. These are the major ones, but the other forms are anxiety, lamentation, uh, so many forms of stress, uh, loss, and the, the the difficulties of material energy are unlimited. If you want to make a comparison, how many ways can you enjoy in this world? And how many ways can you suffer? The list of suffering will outlaw, outdo the list of enjoyment hundreds of times. There's so many ways you can suffer, very few ways you can enjoy. <laughs> so that is material life. And then Prabhupada said, so human life has a purpose. And what is that? To purify one's existence of this contamination so that we can again regain our spiritual form and not undergo this cycle of birth and death. So we never lose our spiritual form, but we can't find it. <laughs> it's just like if you put some money somewhere in your house and you can't find it. It's still there. It's still yours. But you can't find it, therefore you can't take a benefit of it. It's just, it's there, but you have no access to it because you can't find it. So in the same way, the soul is pure, and that's our nature. We are eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. But because of the coverings of material energy, we can't experience that. <laughs> the recommended process of decontamination is devotional service to the Lord. So here's the antidote. Here's the formula. To connect ourself with something that is of the same nature as ourself, and that is Krishna. We are pure spirit soul, and Krishna is pure spirit soul. So just like as you get closer to the heat of the fire, you feel warmth, and you see the light brighter and brighter. So devotional service brings us in connection to Krishna. And then the contamination, as mentioned here, is destroyed by fire. The example is used, gold and silver, have this dross, it's called dross, which is a contamination over the, the over these pure metals. But if you try to wash it, you can't. You have to put it into fire. And that's the only way you can purify it. So the fire of devotional service purifies our natural, pure existence and brings us back to who we are. So we can experience our eternality, our happiness, and our unlimited knowledge, which is our nature. <laughs> and Prabhupada goes on to say, there are various processes for self-realization, such as karma, jnana, and yoga, but none of them is equal to the process of devotional service. So, uh, karma, yoga, Krishna speaks about in Bhagavad Gita, he speaks about jnana yoga, and he also speaks about yoga itself. But then he summarizes everything, yoginam apisarvesham, madgate natmanaha, stradaban bhajate yomamite me yukta tamo madaha. Out of all the yogis, the bhakti yogi is the highest. Because jnana can free you from suffering and give you a little understanding of your eternal nature but it can't give you that transcendental happiness. Karma can free you from the detachments of this material world and give you a little understanding that everything you do in this world is not meant for your enjoyment. It's meant some, for the enjoyment of the person who put those objects here, and that is Krishna. So karma yoga means doing some activity, giving the results of Krishna. It's preliminary, jnana is higher, and yoga is even better. Uh, the power of yoga, one can actually start to manipulate the material energy. The yogis can fly in the sky, they can go smaller than the smallest, uh, they lighter than the lightest, they can enter into a keyhole and come out the other side. They can do all kinds of what we say magic. <laughs> That's what it is, it's magic. But it is a power of the yogis, and through great austerities, through great denials of one's desires in life, and fixation upon meditating on the, on the Lord within the heart, one can reach powerful stages of yoga. 
But still, it is short of bhakti, because bhakti means love, or serving Krishna with love. In the other of these processes, there's no love in there. There's activity, there's knowledge, there is eternality, but there is no love. And only in Krishna says, bhakti amam avijananti, only by love am I attracted. So, and therefore, bhakti yoga, therefore, is the highest because love is the highest and the most complete of all emotions. And love also contains knowledge and activity. So, bhakti contains jnana, karma, and yoga, whereas other, these others don't contain bhakti. So, therefore, bhakti is the highest. Just like if you have a million dollars, you have a hundred dollars. If you have a million dollars, you have a thousand dollars. But if you have a thousand dollars, you don't have a million dollars. <laughs> or euros. <laughs> so the point is, bhakti is the complete and perfect process which contains all of the other benefits of all the other processes, but has its additional benefit that attracts the attention of the Lord, <laughs> which is the goal of life. And Prabhupada goes on to say, as gold and silver can be freed from all dirty contamination by being put into a fire, but not by merely being washed, the living entity can be awakened to his own identity by performing devotional service. Yat sevaya, not by karma, jnana, or yoga. Hmm. Cultivation of speculative knowledge or practice of yoga gymnastics will not be helpful. So, so you see that, you know, uh, one time, <laughs> this was in the early days when Srila Prabhupada first started the Krishna Conscious Movement. Uh, and Prabhupada, you know, was inviting all of the people to come and hear his lectures. But, you know, these devotees, not devotees, they weren't devotees at the time, they were hippies and people from the street. They were used to doing all kinds of different yoga exercises and meditations and things. So even after meeting Prabhupada, they still did that. <laughs> so one time Prabhupada was sitting in his room, and then in the other room all of the devotees were there doing different things. So one boy came in, and he went into the room, and he came out to, to Prabhupada, and he said, What are they doing in there? Prabhupada said, I don't know what they're doing, and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they were standing on their head and <laughs> twisting this way and that way. <laughs> and so, you know, so, you know this, is, uh, this is what it is. It's, it's good exercise, and it's actually good for the body and mind to do these things, but it's not, it will not elevate you to the spiritual platform. That's the point. The word varnam refers to the luster of a one's original identity. Krishna varnam tusa krishna sangopangam saparshadam. Krishna varnam, the, the luster of Krishna. <laughs> the original luster of gold or silver is brilliant, shines, it's glossy, it is attractive. Similarly, the original luster of the living being, us, who is part and parcel of Satchidananda, is the luster of ananda, or pleasure. So our, 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 our supreme good quality is that we enjoy unlimited uh, happiness that is beyond any understanding of material happiness. Material happiness is simply, if you don't feel good, you might do something to relieve your feelings of not being good. Just like if you're hungry, you eat. And by eating, you reduce the pain of hunger. And therefore, you feel satisfied. There's some happiness. Or you feel lusty and you want to satisfy your lusty desires, and you do that. And then you feel some relief from the lust. And then, of course, a few minutes later, it's back again. Anyway, <laughs> that's another thing. So counteracting suffering is what material happiness is, that's all. You do, you, if you feel one way and you, so people say, well, maybe it's more than that. All right, so we give some credit. So you get, you get into a family life and you have some children 
and you have a wife or a husband, and you get some little pleasure. But then you again, you know, the, there's always problems with that. <laughs> I don't want to go into that. That's not the subject of the class today. <laughs> but the point is that in any, anything you do in the material world will never give you real happiness. The real happiness is the soul, it says here, is this ananda. Now the word pleasure uh, is higher than the word happiness. You know, happiness is an experience, but pleasure is a constant state of existence. So the word ananda is pleasure. Ananda bayo vyasat. Every living being has the right to become anandamai, joyful, because he is part of the Satchitananda Vigraha Krishna. So it's our birthright to be happy. Prabhupada would say, if you're not happy, you're in Maya. <laughs> So happiness is our nature, and everyone is looking for happiness. Unfortunately, in the material world, you can't fight it because it's not there. <laughs> we have the example of a, a person. How people look for happiness in the material world, here's the example. It's a little antidote story. One man, he's looking on the ground, he's looking, 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 looking. His friend comes along and says, what are you looking for? I can see you're looking. He said, yeah, I lost some money, and I'm looking for it. Oh, I'll help you. Okay. So they're both looking. And they're both looking around. After some time, the man says, are you sure you lost the money here? He said, no, I lost it over there, but there's more light here. <laughs> Material life. <laughs> Well, there it is. I see it. She looks so nice. Oh, there it is. There's that beautiful car I've been wanting. <laughs> Everything looks so nice, but it's not. It's called Maya. Maya means what is not. It looks good, but there's nothing to it. <laughs> That's the material world. But there is real happiness, and that happiness is Ananda Bayo Vyasa. That pleasure which doesn't end. And when you, just like when you connect with a fire, automatically there is warmth, there's light, there's heat, there's some, ha there's some relief from the cold. As soon as we connect with Krishna, all of our suffering goes, all of our happiness starts to awaken, and immediately, you know, we think, there's nothing else to look for. I found it. <laughs> Krishna. So that's, that is our birthright. So as soon as we connect with Krishna, we're, we are connected with Krishna, but that dross, the contamination of the material energy, has to be burnt away, and that is the process of devotional service. So when we serve the Lord, to please the Lord, and we engage in devotional service such as chanting, just like everyone was dancing today, that, there was some happiness, right? I could see the ladies were really dancing really nicely, even the men look happy sometimes. <laughs> They were trying anyway. <laughs> but the ladies were like flipping over, you know, flipping out and flipping up. So, yeah, so this, so it, it's natural to be happy. So happiness comes with kirtan, happiness comes with taking Krishna prasadam, it's not ordinary food. Happiness comes with hearing about the glories of the Lord, which enter into the heart and awaken one's attraction for the Lord. So the whole process of devotional service is a process of happiness. Why would we do anything in devotional service if it's not going to bring us happiness? We know this is where the happiness is, and we experience it. But what we experience is only a small drop of what is actually there. It's unlimited. It's an ocean. Just like, uh, who is it? Krishna Das Kaviraj, no, not, was it Krishna Das Kaviraj? Yeah, yeah, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, he says, I'm standing on the ocean of the shore of devotion to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and I'm trying to taste just one, of drop, one drop of that unlimited ocean. 
And then he goes on to say, that drop is so great that it can drown the whole world in happiness. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is amazing. He has, he has made Krishna consciousness so wonderful. And before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, it was difficult to become Krishna conscious. Very few people could actually attain to it. Krishna made it tough, but that same Krishna now became more compassionate towards the living entities, and he made it easy. <laughs> Chant, dance, take prasadam, associate with others who are doing the same thing, and read nice books about God, about the philosophy of life, about who you are. So this is Krishna consciousness. It's an ocean of unlimited happiness. And the more you go into it, the more that ocean expands itself. It's like, but he, some, like, just like when you eat something material, just like you have a a sweet ball. <laughs> so you have a sweet ball, and maybe you might say, well, it may, it's not prashadam, but it's just a sweet ball, and you, it's a nice cookie or something like that, and you think, oh, this is nice. So you eat one. Hey, that was great. I'm going to go for another one. So you eat another one. Whoo, that's still good. Uh, let me have another one. So you have a third one. Oh, good. Uh, that's it. Can't do it anymore. <laughs> and you stop. That's it. I, all I can take is three. Maybe some can take four. But after some time, you can't you keep going. It's just not possible. It's not the same sweetness. It's not the same anymore. And uh, or in the ability to uh, accept the sweetness is not there. But Krishna consciousness is not like that. Don't try it with prasadam. I mean, you can do it if you are on the transcendental platform. But you can chant and chant and chant, and you can keep chanting and chanting and chanting, and it gets better and better and better. You can hear about Krishna, and it's always sweet. Krishna das, not Krishna, no, is it? Uh, Sukadev Goswami is narrating Srimad Bhagavatam and, and uh, Maharaj's Pariksha is hearing it for seven days. And he's, he's absorbed. He's, ab so, he's so absorbed in hearing the glories of the Lord that he forgets or doesn't want to eat or doesn't want to sleep. He's, he's so happy just hearing, absorb it. And then after six days of narration, Sukadev Goswami says to him, Maharaj, do you want a break? you want a little rest, some water? He said, oh, no, this is the 10th canto you're coming to. This is what I've been waiting for. Krishna and Vrindavan. And so, yeah, so Sukadev Goswami gets doubly fired up seeing how enthusiastic Sukadev, uh, Maharaj Pariksit is that he just starts to really get enthusiastic to narrate the 10th canto. So that's true. The more we're eager to hear, the more the speaker is eager to, to speak. If we lose our enthusiasm to hear, it also affects the speaker. The speaker says, oh, they don't want to hear. So I'll just say, you know, all glory is the Prabhupada. <laughs> Well, no, that's true. The more the eagerness to hear inspires the speaker to speak more and more. And when the, when the uh, speaker is eager to speak, the devotees want to hear also. So it's reciprocal. It keeps going in the same way. So, then Prabhupada goes on to say, why should the living being be put into tribulation because of the dirty contaminations of the modes of nature? So he's making a question, why should we become contaminated? That's not our nature. The living entity should become purified and regain his original identity. Thus he can do not only devotional service, thus he can do only, this can be done only by devotional service. So he makes a point. This is the only way we can again come back to who we are through devotional service. Therefore, one should adopt the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is described here as Guru Guru, the spiritual master of all other spiritual masters. So another name for Krishna is Adi Guru. That's the name for Krishna. And it means one who is the original spiritual master. So what, all the knowledge that all the spiritual masters have 
are coming from Krishna. Krishna is the source of all knowledge. He says that in the Bhagavad Gita, what is it? Vedaisya jaham aham veda vedo vedantakrit veda ved eva jaham. I'm the compiler of the Vedas, I'm the knower of the Vedas, and the Vedas are meant to know me. So he is Vedasara, he is the essence of the Vedas. The Vedas are expansions of his form. So he is as good as transcendental knowledge. Okay. Even though we may not have the good fortune to contact the Supreme personally, the Lord's representative is as good as the Lord himself. Because such a representative does not say anything unless it is spoken by the Supreme Personality of God. So this is chastity. The Guru is chaste, one who is actually a spiritual master, not some phony guy who puts on and he has a big beard and a hat and he got some he smiles like crazy and he just, you know, he's got all these flowing robes. He speaks all kinds of nonsense and everybody says, wow, that's far out. And Prabhupada was saying, you know, and Prabhupada was making fun one time. Uh, I can't think of that. Prabhupada was making fun. He was just putting together all big words that don't make sense. <laughs> like, what is it? Oh. I can't think of that one line. It's really good. <laughs> it goes, I forgot. It's like Krishna doesn't want to give me the knowledge. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, it's... Uh, Anyway, Prabhupada, and I was, yesterday somebody sent me a little video about this one Mayavadi guru. It's about, it was about 27 seconds long. He comes on air, he's described just the way I said. And he says, he says, all of the religious books are against me. <laughs> I said, good, because they should be. <laughs> You're just bogus, you know. <laughs> And he was down there smiling and making jokes and saying there's too many people in the world. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> so, he, so these guys, you know, they say all kinds of yeah, all kinds of nonsense. And then people think, oh, wow, we can't understand it, so it must be interesting. It must be good. If we can understand it, that doesn't mean it means it's you know. It's not so good, but if we can un can't understand it, it must be really good. <laughs> Since this what goes on, so the, so the representative of God doesn't say anything other than what the Lord says. Yadi deka, tahikaha, Krishna opadesh. The bona fide guru is he who advises his disciple exactly in accordance with the principles spoken by Krishna. There. Yeah. He repeats exactly, and Prabhupada used to say that. People give me credit for, for doing what I'm do, I'm do, I've done, but it's not. I simply repeated the words of my spiritual master. I didn't change anything. I didn't add anything. I simply became his parrot, and therefore I became successful. <laughs> that is the quality. And of course, we might, under, we give, might give it a little bit of a, Understanding is, you can explain the truth in your own words without changing the essence. That's preaching. Preaching means to take that knowledge and without changing it, just present it according to time, place, and candidate or audience. And then it seems different, but it actually is the same thing. But the idea is to keep the essence, and that is keep the meaning, or keep the understanding as given by the previous acharyas. And that is chastity. As a woman is known for her chastity because she follows her husband very strictly, therefore she's glorious. And the same way, if a woman becomes you know, unchaste, then who cares? Nobody can, will respect her, no one will appreciate her. 
everything she said is useless. So in the same way, chastity is a very high principle in Krishna consciousness, being chaste to the words of the spiritual master. Learning how to repeat those words accordingly. <laughs> the bona fide guru is he who has accepted Krishna as the guru. This is Guru Parampara. The original guru is Vyasadeva because he is the speaker of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam wherein everything spoken relates to Krishna. Again, he points to Vyasa, the Vyasadeva. Just like we sit on the Vyasa sun. What is the Vyasa sun? It's the seat of Vyas. So anyone who sits on the Vyasa sun is the representative of Vyas by representing their spiritual master who represents Vyas. That is the actual meaning. Hmm. Therefore, Guru Puja is known as Vyasa Puja. In the final analysis, the original Guru is Krishna. His disciple is Narada, whose disciple is Vyas. And in this way, we gradually come in touch with the Guru Parampara. Evaram parampara praktar eva raja sayo vidu. Everything is coming from Krishna, very carefully handed down from one spiritual master to another. And you get that same knowledge in maybe a slightly different way, but the knowledge is the same coming from Krishna himself. And therefore you know it's bona fide. Nowadays, these so-called gurus, they try to invent something new just to attract people. And it was, uh, they have these different things. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's quite crazy now. Uh, these different yoga studios have expanded their different types of yoga. So they have laughing yoga now. I don't know if you saw that. So you go in there and you just start laughing, that's all. <laughs> you laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And then that's yoga. <laughs> and then they have Beer yoga. I don't know if you saw that. You, they, they drink beer, put the bottle on top of their head and do the yoga exercise. Yeah. And they're all intoxicated and, and the yoga is really sloppy because they, you know, they get all, they get intoxicated with this. And they call it beer yoga. It's very popular now. Yeah. You, can, don't, you can hear about it, but don't try it. <laughs> Even if you like beer, don't do it. Because it's it's dangerous, so this is what they're inventing all kinds of new things just to track people. To say because the idea is do something new, and then you'll become what we say popular. That's it. Yeah. But we're not doing anything new. We're taking the same thing, and we're presenting it maybe in a contemporary way. Therefore, what what is new, maybe is the presentation, but the essence stays the same, that's all. <laughs> One cannot become a guru if he does not know what the personality of Godhead or his incarnation wants. So one must know what Krishna wants. The mission of the guru is the mission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. So this is what Krishna wants. He wants to see his his message getting spread from place to place. Therefore, we we say, oh, this pleases Krishna. This is what Krishna wants. The spiritual master has told us this is what he wants. So let me try to please Krishna by carrying out my, the instructions of the spiritual master. So if one thinks like that, then their life in devotional service is successful. It's perfect. Nothing else you have to do. All you have to do is learn what the spiritual master wants and carry it out. That is perfection. That's all. <laughs> That's Krishna consciousness. <laughs> okay, so any questions or comments? Wonderful purport, so many nice points to it. Hare Krishna. It works? Yeah, it works. Okay, I find myself many times in this situation that 
I feel guilt during the service that I'm not doing it good enough. And that leads to the fact that I will not be able to do it anymore because emotionally I'm just drained because of that. How should I just overcome this? Uh, well, you might want to get some help if you feel like you can't do it properly or you know you're not doing it. Uh, as much as you could or good enough, you just get some help, get some advice. If we just struggle along, we might not be able to see what is the problem, but maybe another person can help you. That's why we associate with devotees so we can get assistance in our devotional service. So we ask questions and we present problems for correction, for clarification. That's one way. Prayer will also help, <laughs> sincere prayer. But I think both those things together, praying and also getting help, will overcome. You know, we don't want to get to the point where we get frustrated or emotionally overwhelmed where we can't do anything. And then it's self-defeating. But we can get beyond that if we ask for help or, you know, pray also, both. Hmm. I'll give you an example. <laughs> this is powerful. It was one, I, I, I don't want to go into the example, but this one doctor, he, he's a devotee, and he was trying to create something within ISKCON to help the devotees around the world. And he was working and working and working and working, and really, I mean, for weeks and months. And every time something successful would happen, something else would go wrong. <laughs> so he just kept trying, and then at one point he got frustrated, and he, he, and he, and he realized, I can't do it. Before he was thinking like he could do it. He told me this just about two weeks ago. He said, I threw up my hands and I said, my dear Lord, if you want it to happen, make it happen. I can't do it. <laughs> the next day, he said, it's amazing, he said. No, he was really amazing. He said, I got so many phone calls. Everything started to fall in place. Everything I wanted to do worked and it just started to f become so smooth. And it actually became successful. Yeah. He told me that just two, week, two three weeks ago when I was in London. He's there, he's there in London. And he, he said, as soon as I threw up my hands, <laughs> I can't do it, Lord. If you want it to happen, you have to make it happen. <laughs> and the next thing happened. And the next day he said, it was amazing. Every, everything fell into place so nicely. He sincerely, completely, with no, full, no ego, saying, it's all yours, Lord. I can't do it. <laughs> and it happened. <laughs> That's Krishna. <laughs> Krishna sees, oh, you think you can do it, huh? <laughs> well, maybe you can, but not always. And sometimes you just have to say, my dear Lord, without your mercy, I can't do it. Yeah. So that's another, that's a very powerful, that is actually the essence of devotional service, that we know that Krishna is the substance, he's the essence, he's the ability, he's the intelligence, he's, he supplies the ingredients, he's everything. And when we work in that way, we can do wonderful things because we leave it all up to Krishna. But we have to work for it. We have to do it. It's not like Arjuna was on the battlefield and the, the Pandavas were outnumbered. By all material estimations, they would, they would have lost the war, no doubt. The Kurus were more powerful. They had many more men, many more, many more uh, what we say, armaments. They had everything. But because Krishna was on their side, but Krishna told Arjuna, you got to fight. <laughs> but your fighting is not the cause of victory. My will is the cause of victory. <laughs> so 
So, but you get, so we have to work and we have to try. But ultimately, Krishna makes it happen, <laughs> or doesn't make it happen either way. It's just the way it is. Just the way Krishna is. He's 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 the he's the source behind everything. He's called Mula. Mula means root. The root of the tree is the is the heart of the tree. When you water the root, then the branches, the leaves, the trunk, the flowers, everything connected to the root gets the benefit of the watering process. So when we work, we serve Krishna and depend on Krishna's mercy, then we are in the best position. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there is a question from the internet. Um, Avaduta Raya Dasa. Can we say if someone does not come to Krishna consciousness, his elevation, elevation to mode of goodness is useless? What's the first word I couldn't hear? Can we say if someone does not come to Krishna consciousness, his elevation to mode of goodness is useless? Yeah, because it's still in within the material energy. As long as you're in the material energy, you're going to struggle. Even the mode of N. Nowadays, the mode of goodness doesn't is not stable. It's being severely challenged by the modes of passion and ignorance. And Prabhupada talks about that. He said the mode of goodness is characterized by knowledge. And he says that knowledge tells you there's no happiness here. <laughs> So the mode of goodness is the best within the material realm, but you still have to die, you still have to take birth again, and who can stay within them? We have the example of King Nirga, that's in, that's in the Bhagavata. King Nirga was in the mode of goodness, and, and he was a king giving charity to Brahmanas, and he was very charitable, he would give cows to, to Brahmanas. But one day, one of the cows that he gave to another brahmana slipped back into his herd and he gave that same cow again to another brahmana. And then the two brahmanas were fighting over the cow. It's, he gave it to me. No, he gave it to me. And uh, King Nirga wanted to give them all more cows, but they said, no, the brahmin's possession, the, 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 brahmin, the possession of the brahmin is as good. As, as as gold. Therefore, they went away angry, cursed the king, and he had to take birth as a lizard <laughs> because of wrong activity in the mode of goodness. He was trying, therefore, in a material world, you can't somehow or other do everything perfect. It's just not possible. <laughs> There's always some mistake. There's always some flaw, even in the mode of goodness. So yeah, I would agree with the conclusion of the question, yeah. It's, mo it's useless. There are more questions from Advaduta Rayadasa. Okay. Okay, so, when Nityananda left this world, I read, even atheists were lamenting, thinking, as the most merciful Nityananda is not here, who will save us? Is this statement only a poetry? Sounds unbelievable. No, it's not only poetry. Dira dira janat priya priya karo. That the the great souls are they uh, they are beneficial to both the dira and adira. Dira means sober. Adira means not sober, or the gentle and the ruffians. Yeah. So, yeah, they could recognize that Nityananda was their well-wisher. <laughs> okay, and the last question. In one lecture, I heard if a devotee does not develop compassion, he is not really a devotee. What do you think? No, he's right. <laughs> compassion is the heart of bhakti. <laughs> Compassion means to, to serve others for the benefit of others, to relieve the suffering of others. So Prabhupada said the, the human form of life is paropaka. 
which means to do good to others. So even in a material sense, material, uh, human life means to do good to others. Those who don't, who don't act to do good to others, even in the material sense, are no better than animals. <laughs> Therefore, they haven't reached human life. But human life, yeah, is meant to do good for others, yeah. So the point is compassion is the heart of bhakti, to feel for the suffering. You may not feel for the sufferings of others, but your spiritual master does. So you should think, wow, my spiritual master is very compassionate to others, so let me serve his mission. And that way you're serving the mission of compassion. And then gradually you will also start to, to feel like that. Not, maybe not initially, but at least you understand that I want to develop compassion, I don't have it, so here's the way to do it, is to act in a compassionate way to show kindness, to show compassion to others, just by acting. And after a while, when you do that, you'll start feeling like that. <laughs> Hare Krishna, that was it from the internet. Thank you, uh, Abhaduta Roy. Thank you very much for your questions. Okay, so we are past nine o'clock now. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. We got some prasadam for devotees ki jai. Okay.